when I came to stack these images, they worked. This is my flat's workflow and I'd be really grateful if people could uh, give me any advice on this. So I've positioned the scope so it's pretty much pointing uh, towards the sky and I've put three sheets of white drawing paper on the top. Now in Nina I've connected the camera and I've started to cool it. Now I know you're not necessarily needing to cool the camera but having had so many problems with flats I am now at the point where I keep absolutely everything the same as the light frames including the temperature, offset, gain, everything, literally everything because I just can't get the flats to work. Nina is now controlling the camera and the camera is going to minus five which is the temperature I would normally take my light frames. So we're pretty much at minus five now and now I'm going to start the flats wizard and it takes the first exposure then it reported it was too dark and it needed to be brighter so I went outside and I removed one piece of paper from the telescope. Then I reset the flats wizard and took it again and this time it took proper flats. After the flats had been completed I covered the telescope and I also wrapped it in felt as well to take the flat darks. I try really hard not to get any light leaks and when the flat dark frames were taken I checked on the screen to ensure that there were no light leaks visible. So I'm at a thousand millimeters with the 200 PDS and the mount is an AZ EQ6 which is a Skywatcher mount and the guiding this evening is pretty good. Um, it's gone up slightly but it was at 0.08 um, a few moments ago uh, which I've never seen it quite that good before so I'm not surprised it's just gonna it's usually around this sort of figure uh, and I'm dithering every other sub so it's um, not dithering on every sub at the moment um, and that seems to be working quite well in the imaging plan in the sequencer I'm going to be taking 130 subs and they will be 120 seconds so that's two minutes i'm just learning nina at the moment i've i've got to the point where i'm able to find an object slew to an object connect all the gear first find an object slew to an object plate solve center build a plan autofocus and it all seems to kind of be working which is great when i came to stack these images they worked and that's really interesting why did these ones work and previous ones haven't. This is a stab which I used to stack it and okay there's a gradient because it was half moon at the time that's fine so I used the light pollution removal tool to get rid of some of it and it turned to this which is better that's good it hasn't got the big round ring and then I processed the image and I got to this. Now this image is interesting because it showed something else and that is the fact that my stars were a really terrible shape but that's okay that's a collimation issue which I know about and I'm going to deal with that's okay but the actual image itself was all right and it didn't have the large circle on the image so I was really pleased great I've got a workflow I thought and then I'm imaged again and I got this and I thought oh that looks quite good as well so this um, is M63 and I noticed that the ring is actually present so this one was a step and this one was in PixInsight which is okay but I realized when I got into the image and removed the light pollution that the ring was back and that's really frustrating so I've gone from having a good image to a not such a good image. Then I did a bit of homework on the internet because I thought I can't be the only person struggling with this issue and I'm not which is good to know. So I did some searches and this one was interesting. Ring pattern in images with a Newtonian scope. 
Now this one visibly showed a similar issue with a large ring on the scope. Now this person went through a whole process and in the end they realized that the secondary mirror spider supports were moving and it was potentially causing issues with the flats calibrating because the flats and the lights didn't add up so they actually ended up replacing the spider but during this there was a huge amount of conversation about coma correctors so I did a little bit more homework on coma correctors and it was talking about internal reflections on a particular combination of filter, coma corrector and scope and then I found on the Pix Insight forum that somebody else couldn't do flats in this case I saw these images and I thought, blimey, they look absolutely the same. My issue with a great big circle there, and then you look at this. It's so, so similar. I realised after I read through this, it looks as if there is some kind of reflection within the scope. And it could be mechanically related to movement, so it's difficult to calibrate out. It could be related to the threads on things like coma correctors. And... It could be related to internal reflections within the actual coma corrector itself. It's incredibly difficult to find. Now, a lot of people have flocked different parts of their scopes or painted it with matte black paint. The overarching sort of feeling I got from reading all of this was that flocking was not the right method. It was about identifying which exact part was causing this reflection and then eliminating that. So I'm not going to go crazy and flock everything. What I'm going to do is try and identify where this reflection is coming from. I do have a different coma corrector. So I think my first thing to try is to swap the coma corrector for a different one and see whether that has a different result. But the thing which is really confusing about this is why is it that this image has got the circle yet with exactly the same setup this image does not have the circle so there's clearly something there and somebody else mentioned and can't find it at the moment but somebody else mentioned that it could be related to light pollution these objects are obviously in different parts of space so was my telescope pointing at a part of space with less light pollution because that reflection is is apparently caused by light coming in from light pollution so it could be that this was pointing at a part of space without that particular type of light pollution and this one wasn't so i need to do a lot more homework on this to try and identify exactly how to eliminate it Thanks very much for watching. I hope you're getting some clear skies. If you have seen or experienced this problem and you know how to eliminate it, please get in touch because I'd absolutely love to be able to resolve this and also to have a documented method by which it can be eliminated. Take care, everyone.